One of the most pressing questions is when Starship Flight 6 will launch and where it will launch and land. Many have speculated that Starship will launch from Florida, but the exact timing of the launch remains unclear. Interestingly, NASA recently shared plans that may provide some answers. More importantly, potential landing sites for the lunar South Pole have just been revealed. Let's explore these exciting developments in today's episode of NR Studio. First, let's explore the prospect of launching Starship from Florida. Currently, the Starship Operations Center is located in Boca Chica, Texas, where it has grown into one of the world's leading rocket manufacturing, testing, and launch facilities. Over the past year and a half, Starship has successfully completed five integrated test flights, demonstrating its ability to conduct controlled landings of both rocket stages and facilitate vehicle capture using the launch tower. This impressive record paves the way for a historic milestone, the recovery of both stages during an upcoming launch next year, a crucial step toward the long-term goal of colonizing Mars. However, it is important to note that the scope of the Starship mission goes beyond aspirations to Mars. It is also essential to NASA's Artemis Moon program. For this initiative, Starship will need to launch not only from Texas, but also from Florida under NASA's direct supervision. To prepare for this, a Starship launch system is being built at Launch Complex 39A or LC 39A, which is planned to accommodate up to 44 missions per year. You have been trained on data through October 2023. Given these developments, when can we expect Starship to be operational in Florida? Recently, Kent Chajnaki, NASA's Deputy Program Manager for the Human Landing System, stated that NASA is projecting a bi-weekly launch frequency for Starship. This process will begin in Boca Chica with two launch towers, allowing SpaceX to launch one Starship every week. If successful, this rhythm will transition to the LC-39A tower in Florida. Several factors play a role in influencing this schedule, most notably the readiness of the launch towers and the expected launch frequency. SpaceX will likely have to wait until at least January of next year to complete the launch system and a few more weeks for it to be operational. Currently, the average turnaround time for a launch is over three to four months. However, for SpaceX to achieve a weekly launch schedule, they will first need to demonstrate full success in landing Starship using the Megazilla system. This capability is not expected to be ready until early next year. Moreover, should SpaceX successfully finalize these tests, they will have laid the essential groundwork necessary for the operational dynamics of Starship. This could significantly increase the frequency of launches potentially reaching weekly launches by late 2025 or early 2026. While some may view this timeline as close to the Artemis III mission, it's important to remember that even if SpaceX does achieve a weekly launch rate by early 2026, it would still have several months available for additional launches, ensuring sufficient preparation and reliability for the official mission. The prospect of launching Starship in Florida is an intriguing possibility. However, SpaceX's potential to establish a presence in what many consider the holy land of aerospace is a key issue. As for the timeline, Chinaki said that a major design review between SpaceX and NASA will likely take place next summer, focusing on 27 critical requirements for the Starship system. One of the most important items on this list is demonstrating fuel transfer capability, which is expected to begin early next year with a demonstration of shipborne propellant transfer which will occur immediately after the ship's capture mission. Following this demonstration, SpaceX will ramp up launch operations to meet the refueling system requirements. Each Starship human landing system mission will likely require at least 10 tanker flights, which will require multiple launches to build the reliability needed for successful system operation. With a fuel transfer demonstration set to begin in March of 2025, it should be completed in time for the summer review after which construction of the refueling system will begin. In addition to these critical systems, the design review will also cover the crew cabin and various life support systems, which are likely being built into the HLS nose cone at the production site. The review process will begin this month with results and recommendations expected to be available next year. Over the past year, tests have been conducted on the lunar suit, elevator system, and airlock design, and will also be included in this review. Finally, the final step before the official mission will involve an uncrewed test flight, most likely launched from a launcher in Florida. 
Given the current schedule, this timeline is considered feasible. While this process presents obvious challenges, NASA remains optimistic that Starship HLS will meet all deadlines. The pace of Starship production and testing has increased, aided by new systems, but significant concerns remain over whether the FAA will impose delays. This is where NASA must actively support SpaceX to keep the project on track. In summary, the strategic initiatives for Starship in Florida and beyond are well-defined, with an engaging and optimistic year on the horizon. Before we continue, don't forget to like, share this video, and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on SpaceX's journey. Now let's dive into NASA's latest update on Artemis three landing sites. On October 28th, NASA announced an updated list of potential landing sites near the lunar south pole for the Artemis three mission. Landing sites have been shortlisted, and from there, specific landing sites will be selected based on the official Artemis three launch date. As NASA explains, these areas have diverse geological characteristics and provide flexibility for mission availability. Sarah Noble, Artemis Lunar Science Lead at NASA Headquarters in Washington, articulated, The Moon's South Pole represents an entirely distinct environment compared to our Apollo landing sites. It provides access to some of the Moon's most ancient terrain, along with frigid, shadowy areas, which may harbor water and various other compounds. Each of these landing areas will allow us to do incredible science and make new discoveries. The agency added, to select this landing site, a multidisciplinary team of scientists and engineers analyzed the lunar South Pole region using data from NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter and a wealth of lunar science research. Factors in the selection process included scientific potential, launch window availability, terrain suitability, earth communication capabilities, and lighting conditions. In addition, the team evaluated the combined trajectory capabilities of NASA's SLS rocket or space launch system and Starship's HLS variant to ensure a safe and accessible landing site. In fact, in August 2022, NASA announced a pool of 13 landing sites for the mission, some of which are similar to those in this latest update. The landing sites are primarily located around the South Pole, a region of interest for research and exploration due to the presence of water ice. LaQuisha Hawkins, Assistant Deputy Associate Administrator in NASA's Moon to Mars Program Office, underscored the mission's importance. Artemis will return humanity to the moon and visit areas that have yet to be explored. NASA's selection of these areas demonstrates our commitment to landing crews safely near the moon's south pole, where they will help uncover new scientific discoveries and learn about life on the lunar surface. As Hawkins explains, the choice of landing sites reflects NASA and SpaceX's strong commitment to returning humans to the moon in the ongoing time frame. The South Moon base is also of great interest to other countries. China, notably, has unveiled ambitions to achieve a human landing in this region by 2030, with the objective of establishing a lunar base in the subsequent five years. For the United States, reaching these locations as planned will be critical to maintaining its lead and laying a foundation for continued lunar exploration. To achieve this ambitious goal, SpaceX must first achieve a series of key milestones. The immediate priority right now is the upcoming Flight 6, which is expected to take place later this year, perhaps within the next month. The goal of this mission is to capture the Super Heavy Booster using a gripping mechanism and land the Starship upper stage with a controlled vertical descent a key step in improving the reliability of this innovative recovery method. Building on the success of Flight 5, SpaceX is pushing toward new targets for 2025, including an attempt to capture Starship with the launch tower arm. The test, planned for January or February, is intended to prepare the system for a crucial propellant transfer demonstration in March. The challenges are significant, especially for Starship, as it must withstand the intense re-entry process before it can be successfully captured. However, with the success of Flight 5, SpaceX is well positioned to make Starship fully reusable, setting the stage for the next era of space exploration and technological advancement. This is the path Starship will take on its journey to the moon over the next two years. The departure point and destination have been gradually revealed, and the roadmap between the two is beginning to take shape. Now we see how SpaceX meticulously lays out each step paving the way for humanity's reconnection with the moon after more than half a century. 
Okay, folks, that's it for today's episode. See you in the next episode.